president and CEO of the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression and co-author of the book, The Canceling of the American Mind, Greg Lukianoff. <laughs> Greg, how are you, sir? Great, Great to meet you. you. Thank you, sir. Well, you're, you know why you're here this week. This is the week that they uh, called the uh, heads of the uh, Harvard and Penn and MIT. They could have called a number of other colleges, like my alma mater, Cornell. There are a bunch of assholes up there these days, too. <laughs> uh, but these were the three who were called. And this is really what you've been writing about for a long time. This is what your book is about. We quoted you, your organization, FIRE, a few weeks ago in an editorial because it was about campuses and where the free speech was. What, first of all, what does FIRE stand for? The a Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression. We okay. were 25 years old this year. Okay. Oh, wow, I didn't know you were on that. Okay. So, so I remember when we did the piece, the, at the absolute bottom of the list. Yep. Ne they got a negative score. Was Harvard. Harvard, yep. And right next to them was Penn. Yep. So these are two of the colleges who are now on Team Hamas. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, is that a coincidence, or what is the connection? <laughs> well, this is, I mean, they, they kind of got what they had coming, because they, they had to go in front of Congress and convince them that they actually now we're good on free speech, and nobody believed them. Harvard, I, you know, it earned its position dead last. And I always give the example, you know, when it comes to Harvard, Carol Hooven, for example, she's someone who was on a show, she was promoting a book about testosterone, she made the point that we should be uh, kind and compassionate toward, towards trans people, use their pronouns, but we can't pretend that biological sex isn't real. And the DEI administrator you know, uh, at Harvard, you know, started complaining about it. Suddenly students are boycotting her class and writing petitions. And she was, uh, she, she left Harvard because of, because of the environment. And so nobody could actually take seriously the idea that they, they believe in free speech. Meanwhile, the president of Penn, after her disastrous performance, comes out and says, oh, you know what? We're not actually going to have our policies match constitutional standards anymore. And it's like, no, you've been letting administrators uh, uh, clamp down on speech for decades now. This will only make it worse. Okay, but the connection between yeah. supporting Hamas yeah. and the lack of free speech, yeah. let's get into that. Because yeah. I want to read, this is what... Uh, the congresswoman who was grilling, Elise Stefanik, who has her own issues with speech, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> New York State, used to be a normie. Okay, but she loves Trump now. Um, she asked the Penn uh, person, does calling for the genocide of Jews violates Penn's rules or code of conduct, yes or no? Now, I'm a free speech person like you are. Yeah. I'm also Team Israel. Yeah. So let's just get real about this. Sure. Calling for the genocide of Jews. One of them, I think it was the Penn person, said, I've not heard that. Mm -hmm. In other words, how explicit is it? Because when I break down the phrases that I hear, first yeah. there's the intifada. There yeah. are a lot of people who say, you shouldn't say that. I disagree. Yeah. Free speech. Yeah. Intifada. That's one of those vague terms like jihad. It probably means violence. But you know what? It's just <laughs> uprising, <laughs> whatever. Give you the better. OK, then there's from the river to the sea. Yep. Okay, that's a little more genocide-y, but, you know, <laughs> let's give the benefit of that. Could be, well, we just want the Jews to move, not die. <laughs> Where they're going to move to, I'm going to address that next week. On our, for our, fin <laughs> our season finale is next week, by the way. It's true. <laughs> As you can see, the excitement is building. Yeah. <laughs> And then there's a phrase, by any means necessary. Yeah. Okay, now, now I'm kind of peeing my pants. Yeah. <laughs> right, and I'm not even Jewish, but come on. <laughs> by any means necessary, that, so where do you draw the line here and what do you say is free speech and what should not be allowed? Well, we, uh, the First Amendment actually gives a lot of guidance on this. And one thing that's been horrifying over the past month is seeing a lot of unprotected speech on campus. We're seeing things that cross the line into true threats, discriminatory harassment. We're seeing things that actually aren't protected. But uh, merely expressive, uh, uh, offensive uh, expression, like saying intifada, that is absolu uh, absolutely protected. But can saying things like that be part of a pattern of threats or harassment? Of course it can be. And it was kind of embarrassing to watch these university presidents of the top institutions in the country not being able to answer that clearly. Right. See, what irks me is that, look, I'm always going to be on the side of as far as you can push free speech. Yep. And, and of course, as you say, there's already limits to some life speech, yeah. and violence and so forth. You fire in a crowded theater. Okay, so it's not absolute. What bothers me is the double standard. Oh, my God, yeah. 
that can you imagine, I mean, okay, say they don't want to say kill the Jews, mm -hmm. but I certainly have heard chanted, fuck the Jews, mm -hmm. fuck the Jews. Can you imagine saying fuck the and any other, I'm not going to say any other group because they'll, <laughs> they'll cl clip the tape and I'll live with that forever. <laughs> but <laughs> I just, I cannot think of any other group that oh, you yeah. could say fuck the blank and, and have it be acceptable. The double standards on campus, we talk about this in canceling, we talk about this at FIRE all the time, the double standards are astounding, but you have to have them be, um, uh, when you have policies like this, because if they actually enforce them against everybody, they wouldn't last a second. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, I honestly think the kids, I think they're, you know that phrase, useful idiots? Yeah. <laughs> The, the bigger scandal here is that these are the biggest, most esteemed colleges in the country, and they've raised a bunch of fucking idiots. 